Hi everyone, it is June 26, 2019. How Evil Wins, the Hypocritical Double Standard of Political Outrage. I want to thank my subscriber for sending this article along. I'm going to read some of this article, but first I want to share an experience a subscriber of mine had. She lives with her three children in Phoenix, Arizona. In, in the town where she lives, uh, there was a break-in into a home and iPads or Apple devices were stolen. The only information that the cops had, three kids, one white, two Hispanics, they drove a black truck. Her son went into town to get a cup of coffee and he came back and he went upstairs her she was in her bedroom all of a sudden she hears a man inside her home screaming her son's name she comes out four cops are standing inside her home they had busted down the door to get in uh, and they were yelling for her son her son comes down she has no clue what the hell is going on neither does her son her son when her son gets down four cops take a hold of him pull him outside the door and took him to a police car his mother didn't see where they took him she kept yelling where is my son before that when the cops were inside the home uh, she was saying you have no right to be here. Why are you here? Uh, get out of my home. You have no right to be here without a warrant. When she went outside, she saw seven or eight cop cars in her driveway outside her home. And three cops stood in front of her. One cop said, don't let her go any further. She was blocked from getting off her porch. She had no idea where they took her son. All her questions about where is my son were completely ignored. The cops standing in front of her were looking through her. Excuse me. Hang on. Okay, my neighbor finally drove away. So the cops are standing there blocking her from uh, getting off her porch and they will not ask, answer any questions. They're looking at her, and she said they were looking at me like I'm not even human. The cops, the only thing that they said to her or asked was, how old is your son? How old is your son? Then asked, who else came inside with him? She said, no one. They said, well, we need to look inside your house. She refused. Then they tried to intimidate her to let her get inside her house. She still refused. Uh, she had said in the beginning, you have no right to be here without a warrant. She was not going to let them in. The cops would not tell her a thing. Not why they were there not why they took her son, not where they took her son. She called her father. When her father gets there, the cops talk to him. And he asked, where is my grandson? They said, they pointed to a, a police car, they walked over, and she sees a computer in this police car. She looks, she sees a picture of her son, his information, uh, and the police walk away, they start talking to another cop, and they come back and they say, so here's what happened. We made a mistake. They say they're sorry. They let her son out of the police car. They made a mistake. The only infraction her son committed 
driving a black truck. So seven to eight cop cars, about ten cops. She lives on a small cul-de-sac. Her son is a good kid, never got in trouble before, but he was driving a black truck. And apparently in Phoenix, a lot of kids drive black trucks. Do you think that is the behavior of police in a free country? Do you care that that took place? Because you really should. No one is immune to our police state now. She was asked what she had learned from the Holocaust, and she said that 10% of any population is cruel, no matter what, and that 10% is merciful, no matter what, and that the remaining 80% could be moved in either direction. It's from a book written by Kurt Vonnegut. This article is written by John W. Whitehead, a constitutional attorney. Please spare me the media hysterics and the outrage and the hypocritical double standards of those whose moral conscience appears to be largely dictated by their political loyalties. Anyone who believes that the injustices, cruelties, and vicious callousness of the U.S. government are unique to the Trump administration has not been paying attention. No matter what the team colors might be at any given moment, the playbook remains the same. The leopard has not changed its spots. The American police state that is continuing to wreak havoc on the rights of the people under the Trump administration is the same police state that wreaked havoc on the rights of the people under every previous administration. So yeah, brace yourselves. While we squabble over which side is winning this losing battle, a tsunami approaches. Couldn't sleep last night. I go on Drudge just to see what was happening because I hadn't been on Drudge all day. What is that fabulous headline on Drudge? It's all about Mueller. Oh, I guess he's testifying again or something. The Awake Trump Supporters. It's very disappointing though that's an understatement, to see how many are still supporting this guy, not seeing that they are being so distracted with an endless issue that never gets resolved. My fellow Americans, can you not see and hear how issues never get resolved. They go on endlessly in our country. Why? Because problems are not to be resolved. The problems presented to you are your entertainment to get you caught up in the political drama they never get resolved. They go on endlessly. And most Americans are right there in the drama, getting all heated up. And it's the same thing they hear and see day after day after day after day for years. We still have this PC crap going on. We still have the removal of Confederate statues, the trashing of Founding Fathers. It all continues. Charlottesville, Virginia, home of Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration of Independence, champion of the Bill of Rights, nation's third president, city councils, 
counselors in a quest for so-called equity have proposed eliminating Jefferson's birthday as a city holiday. Yay. Isn't that important? Considering what's going on in our country, everyone in Charlottesville, Virginia, should be outraged that they're even spending time on this. Yes, while the populace wages war over past injustices, injustice in the here and now continues to trample innocent lives underfoot. And I have more and more subscribers suffering the injustices that are taking place. Nothing has changed except for the acceleration of all of the agendas under Trump. Phoenix police drew their guns, shouted profanities, assaulted and threatened to shoot a black couple whose four-year-old daughter allegedly stole a doll, a doll from a dollar store. I saw the footage. I saw the film. This four-year-old steals a doll. The parents don't even know. She walks out of the dollar store. Cops threaten to shoot the pregnant young mother in the head in the presence of the couple's one- and four-year-old daughters. Horrifying in every way. Tell me again why it's more important to spend valuable political capital debating the birthdays of dead presidents rather than proactively working to put a stop to a government mindset that teaches cops it's okay to treat citizens of any color with brutality and a blatant disregard for their rights. Phoenix cops did this to a black family. My subscriber, these Phoenix cops, come busting through her door without a warrant, take her son out of the house, prevent her from getting off the porch, treat her as if she's not even a human being. They were white. We've got to get our priorities straight. Did I say they were white? They are white. <laughs> that they're still here with us. All right. We've got to get our priorities straight here. If we are to ever have any hope of maintaining any sense of freedom in America as long as we allow ourselves to be distracted, diverted, occasionally outraged, always polarized, and content to view each other rather than the government as the enemy, we'll never manage to present a unified front against tyranny. Well, many of us have been saying that for eight years and we have more division right here within this community. Stop with all of the excuses and the hedging and the finger pointing and the pissing contest to see which side can outshot, shout, outblame, outspew the other. Enough already with the short and long-term amnesia that allows political sycophants to conveniently for uh, forget the duplicity, complicity, and mendacity of their own party while casting blame on everyone else. This is how evil wins. This is how freedom falls and tyranny rises. Do you not hear? People who say, oh, I'm not playing the blame game. Blame everyone. Everyone. But they never take responsibility for the wrongs that they commit and they will never look at individuals they'll look at their team the Democrats or Republicans and make excuses and they won't hold them accountable this is a psyche that is killing us distracted with manufactured crises polarizing politics fighting that divides the populace into warring us versus them camps, fail to take note of the looming danger that threatens to wipe freedom from the map and place us all in chains. Anytime you have an entire nation so mesmerized by the antics of the political ruling class that they are ob oblivious to all else, you'd better beware. 
or they make excuses for all else. Or they prop up whatever tiny crumb is thrown at them from their political leaders. They say, here, look at this. This is what he did, like Trump. Um, he has been arresting sex traffickers, human traffickers. But they won't listen to the fact that, do you understand you're being thrown a crumb? And do you understand that the numbers are no different, uh, those arrests, the numbers are no different from every other administration, but human trafficking is exploding all over. So you get one little crumb, and that's enough for you to go, hey, well, clearly, Carol, you are someone who is, um, you know, you have that confirmation bias activated in your head because you won't look, no, I do look at that. And I assess that as the crumb that you are being thrown. When you look at all of what Trump has done, it is rather shocking to see awake Trump supporters not seeing the tsunami of bad uh, freedom depriving acts that Trump has committed. It's a tsunami compared to the crumb. Yes, it's very... I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed by an awful lot of subscribers that I thought we were on the same page during the Obama years and that page, I didn't turn it, but so many of my subscribers turned that page. They got on another page and they got on that matrix bandwagon. Make America great again. Jumping into the queue crowd. Believing all the horseshit that they're hearing. It's very upsetting because our freedoms are being destroyed every single day and the noose of tyranny is getting tighter and tighter. You know, anytime you have an entire nation mesmerized by this political drama, you better beware. Government that operates in the shadows speaks in a language of force and rules by fiat, you'd better beware. And anytime you have a government so far removed from its people as to ensure that they are never represented, you better beware. Well, we have not been represented for decades. And many knew, many knew that they weren't being represented, but they still went to vote. Ah, look at yourself, Carol, I have. And I have admitted in videos, I was the useful idiot. I was the sheeple. I was, you know, the person living in a delusion. I was living a pretense. I bought all of the bullshit of the Democrat platform, never checking it out to see if any of it was true because I was surrounded by people just like me and when you hear when you hear what you believe reflected back at you from so many different people you are trapped in this you think you're right so you don't have to check it out why do I have to check anything out my beliefs I have so much support for my beliefs and I'm surrounded by smart people and well they're saying the same thing I'm saying, so somebody must have checked it out, right? No. No one checked it out. 
So until you become that person who checks out thoroughly what is going on, you're trapped in a bubble. Milton Mayer recounting in a book uh, they thought they were free. Most of us did not want to think about fundamental things and never had. There was no need to. Nazism gave us some dreadful fundamental things to think about. We were decent people and kept us Nazism kept us so busy with continuous changes and crises and so fascinated, yes, fascinated by the machinations of the national enemies without and within, that we had no time to think about these dreadful things that were growing little by little all around us. Sound familiar? We are no longer living the American dream. We're living the American lie politicians of all stripes who lie compulsively and without any seeming remorse that they've almost come to prefer the lies. Of course, we've been living this for decades. This didn't just happen after 9-11. 9-11 gave them the okay to really press down that pedal and speed all things up. Speed the police state, the tyranny, the takeover of the United States. Just all of it has been so obvious since 9-11. Increasingly obvious and it's gotten to the point where the obvious has now turned our life into this Kafka-esque nightmare that we live. Because people, well, our fellow Americans are compulsive believers. Yes, they believe the lie. They won't give it up. And what is frightening is to see how many awake in this crowd decided to go back to believe the lie. Once Trump took office. You know, left-leaning Americans are determined to believe that the world has become a far more dangerous place under Trump, while right-leaning Americans are equally convinced that Trump has set us on a path to prosperity and security. When it is so not true, it's frightening that anybody could believe it. The thing about Trump that makes him different from all else, his lies. They're so outrageous, so big, so enormous, that anybody who could believe this is out of their mind. Nothing has changed. The police state is still winning. We, the people, are still losing. Police haven't stopped disregarding the rights of citizens. My subscriber who lives in Phoenix. The disregard, the disrespect in which she and her son were treated. The SWAT teams haven't stopped crashing through doors and terrorizing families. How do you think her son and she felt? Do you think this can't happen to you? Do you know how many millions of Americans, how many millions of Americans have already been thrown under the bus with this police state, with the weather being used as a weapon, the economy that Trump turned around just like Obama turned around, more people working. The best economy since 1969. Yay, America. He's making America great again. I'm sorry, guys. You know, when you see people who were aware leave in droves and go right 
smack back into the matrix, you wonder how we could possibly fight anything. We can't. We can't. Yeah. You know, the Pentagon, Department of Homeland Security haven't stopped militarizing and federalizing local police. Police forces continue to transform into heavy, heavily armed extensions of the military, complete with jack boots, helmets, shields, batons, pepper spray, stun guns, assault rifles, body armor, miniature tanks, and weaponized drones. And we, the people, remain the enemy combatants under Trump. Going on three years. Schools haven't stopped treating young people like hardcore prisoners teaming up with law enforcement to create a schoolhouse to jailhouse track by imposing a double dose of punishment for childish infractions. They get uh, suspended or expelled from school for things that we committed. That, um, speaking for my generation, baby boomers, you see these kids getting hauled off by the police in handcuffs elementary school kids for things that we would have just been brought to the principal parents would have been called and that's it and maybe we would have to go home for the day sent home for the day these kids now are getting a police record and expelled. They're, they're ruining children's lives. Children are being destroyed. They've got drug sniffing dogs, entering classrooms, sniffing lockers. Our for-profit private prison has not stopped. It's grown. And when you have a private prison system people making a profit from locking people up what do you do you lobby those who write the laws to write more laws you know it's oh man censorship hasn't stopped yes we know that government bureaucrats haven't stopped turning american citizens into criminals the average american now unknowingly commits about three felonies a day thanks to an overabundance of vague laws that render otherwise innocent activity illegal. The surveillance state hasn't stopped. It's gotten so, uh, well, the tentacles are all over 5G, Trump rolling it out. But that's not enough for the Trump supporters to claim that, you know, something's wrong with Trump here. Maybe I should, maybe I should reevaluate my support. No. They claim, well, he doesn't know the dangers of 5G. Ah, good justification going on there. It's all about yourself. It's not you wanting to make America great again. It's not you caring about anybody but yourself. You just want to believe the horseshit because it allows you to just continue doing whatever the hell you want to do every single day. And you're comfortable, so... It's a really self-centered belief you got going. So, yeah, you know, I have subscribers now who have told me that they're scared to write certain things in emails because of the surveillance. I had subscribers early on early on eight years ago already scared of the police state not wanting to do anything attacking me for even daring to say get involved in your community oh I still have subscribers who say we have to stop paying taxes they're absolutely right but how do you get Americans to stop paying taxes if one stops, two stop, they get destroyed. We need Americans on the same page, and that will never happen. It will never happen. Sorry to um, not give you any false hope, but I don't do that.
I'm not going to do it. We're in bad, bad shape. Three years into that fabulous Trump administration, three years into Make America Great Again, doing the same old, same old, expecting different results, is a clear sign of mental illness. Yeah, TSA still doing what it does, molesting people who come into the airport, but they're now all over. They continue to do random security sweeps of nexuses of transportation, including ports, railway, bus stations, airports, ferries, subways, as well as political conventions, baseball games, music, concerts. Sweep tactics include the use of x-ray, 5G technology, pat-downs, drug-sniffing dogs, Congress hasn't stopped enacting draconian laws such as the U.S. Patriot Act and the NDAA and these laws. They just keep rolling on out. And they are grossly unconstitutional. Trump violates the Constitution. But, hey, I support the guy. You know, it's we have to look at our own insanity and clear it up otherwise otherwise are you next to have the police bust down your door and haul your son out of the house pull him out four cops pull him out for driving a black truck the Department of Homeland Security hasn't stopped being wasteful, growing, fear-mongering beast, SWAT team spying on activists, dissidents. Yeah, 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 the military-industrial complex hasn't stopped profiting from endless wars abroad. And boy, Trump has uh, sold an awful lot to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, because they're our ally. And Syria, Syria... Assad is the tyrant. He's the evil tyrant killing his own. And Saudi Arabia is just a fabulous, wonderful ally of ours. You can't see, you can't see the evil committed every single day by the U.S. government and U.S. military. It's all around you. And I know that a lot of you see it. But based on the comments that I get, I see that so many people are just really comfortable and they are making justifications for sitting back and doing nothing. And then people have attacked me for, <laughs> yeah, uh, sitting comfortable in my home just posting videos. Yeah, I'm comfortable. No, I had everything taken away. I am the destroyed American, destroyed by the evil, hanging on for dear life, actually, every single day. I've been doing that for years. Ah, but you've got your presumption that I'm really comfortable. Well, what are you doing in your town, Carol? It's not my town. So, I will be posting videos explaining what is going on with me. I drove around the country looking for people who were actively involved and found no one. <laughs> the American people haven't stopped acting like gullible sheep, blind, rank and file, partisan devotion to their respective political gods, that they have lost sight of the one thing that has remained constant in recent years. Our freedoms are steadily declining every single day. So you can try to persuade yourself that you are free, 
that you still live in a country that values freedom and that it's not too late to make America great again. But to anyone who has been paying attention to America's decline over the past 50 years, it will be just another lie. The German people chose to ignore the truth and believe the lie. They were not oblivious to the horrors taking place around them. Anyone in Nazi Germany who wanted to find out about the Gestapo, the concentration camps, the campaigns of discrimination, the persecutions, need only read the newspapers. The warning signs were definitely there, blinking incessantly like large neon signs. The vast majority voted in favor of Nazism. And in spite of what they could read in the press, and here by word of mouth about the secret police, the concentration camps, official anti-Semitism, and so on, there is no getting away from the fact that at that moment, the vast majority of the German people backed him, backed Hitler, the wife of a prominent German historian, neither of whom were members of the Nazi party, said this, on the whole, everyone felt well, and there were certainly 80% who lived productively and positively throughout the time. We also had good years. We had wonderful years. As long as their creature comforts remained undiminished, as long as their bank accounts remained flush, as long as they weren't being discriminated against, persecuted, starved, beaten, shot, stripped, jailed, and turned into slave labor, life was good. Life is good in America, too. Life is good in America as long as you've got enough money to spare that you don't mind being made to pay through the nose for the government's endless whatever. Life is good in America as long as you're able to keep sleepwalking through life, cocooning yourself in political fantasies that depict a world in which your party is always right and everyone else is wrong, and distracting yourself with bread and circus entertainment that goes on endlessly and bears no resemblance to reality. Life is good in America as long as you don't have to come face to face with a trigger happy cop hyped up on the power of the badge, trained to shoot first and ask questions later. Life is good. And Carol, don't you know, it's going to get better. Everything's going to get better because Jesus is coming back to make it better. Trump is making it better. Everything is just so much better. Yep, you're comfortable.